Hey, North Point students. Service is about to begin, and I'm so excited that you are joining us online. Don't forget to hit share and like and send this right now. Text three friends this video link so they can watch with you tonight. I'll see you guys all for the service. Hey guys, it's me Carl. Um, these are my tips for staying sane while in quarantine. Tuna banjo. Take a nap. It's one of the best ways to kill some time. Boost your confidence by fishing for compliments from a friend. What about me do you like? Call your main mom. No main mom. Planet of the Apes is not based on a true story. <laughs> Make sure to keep good hygiene. <laughs> Google image TJ Maxx just for the fun of it. Read a book. <laughs> the rum is always gone. <laughs> Tell secrets to your dog. Think of a new idea, like turning on a lamp. Become a peanut butter monster. I'm a peanut butter monster. <laughs> Get to know your houseplants better. I once ate three dozen eggs in one sitting. I haven't been the same since. Scream. <laughs> Take a nap. Start collecting cow manure. Wow, what a stack. But then realize you're not supposed to be outside. So quickly run back inside. Self-reflect. Is this really me? How did I end up in this body? What even is a body? And how are we all in these bodies on this giant rock flowing through infinite space of nothingness? A dark, vast, cold, eternal nothingness. And then you realize how hungry you are. Cook an egg! So yeah, that's pretty much the video. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed all these tips for staying sane while in quarantine. <laughs> it's obviously helping me, so I'm sure it'll help you. Seriously, I've never been better. Sometimes I'm afraid of the dark. To be honest, I've never seen a baby pigeon. I think Power Rangers is actually a really good show. And it was before it's time. I haven't paid my taxes in 10 years. To be honest, I don't even know what a tax is. At this point, I'm just too afraid to ask. Turtles actually freak me out. To be honest, I lost my toothbrush about a month ago.
Hey Journey students, it's Allie. Guys, I miss you so much. Sending virtual hugs to each and every one of you. I just wanna remind you today's Wednesday. It's my favorite day of the week because it means I get to spend time with God and spend time with you. Um, even though we're in our living rooms and even though we're not together, we still have opportunities like Instagram Live and Zoom where we can stay connected and times like this where we get to just plug into God's word and tune our hearts into the worship and just praise Jesus together even in our, even in our living rooms. That's just how amazing our God is. So I just wanted to encourage you with that and let you know that I'm thinking of you. I'm always praying for you. Let's continue on our journey to get rooted and let's worship together. Love you guys. Yeah. 
falling when fear is coming still you're calling me when faith is lost and my hope exhausted because you will be my strength when my mind says i'm not good enough god you're enough for me yeah and i've decided i'm not giving up you won't give up on me you won't give up on me your love is holding on Dirty students, I hope you all are doing well. Before I pray, I just want to remind you guys that when things seem to be uncertain and we are confused about what's going on, we can rely on the fact that God has a very specific plan for you uh, and for me. And that plan we know is in our best interest. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for this day that you've given to us, God. Uh, Lord, as we listen to your message today, I pray that you will just fill in the gaps in our hearts right now, the, the void spaces that um, we just are, are not sure or confused about what's going on. I pray, Lord, uh, that you would open our hearts to your message today and uh, give us a, a spirit of worship uh, as we listen to your word. In your name, amen. 
Well, hey, North Point students, welcome to Journey Wednesday night in the living room. That's right, we're going to be right here settling in tonight, just like you're at home right now in your living room, or maybe in your office space, or maybe even your bedroom. Right now, we're going to dial in and we're going to join together tonight for Journey Wednesday night right here in the living room. As we continue with our series, this is week number three, but this is our final week in the Come and See series. Uh, Tonight's going to be a very personal invitation uh, that we're going to read in Scripture tonight. So I'm really looking forward to this. I hope that you've been tracking along. I want to continue to invite you to share these links, subscribe to our YouTube, uh, get your parents, or if you're on Facebook, follow us on all of those areas, subscribe, like, and share. Uh, These are going to be the ways. Uh, It's amazing that how technology we're using today versus when it first kind of became on the scene. And, and, and can you think about this? It was in the mid to late 70s uh, that really broadcasting became widespread. And it was in 1975, uh, this was even before I was even born, that in 1975 was kind of the first cable broadcasting network. And it was HBO home box office. It was a way for a network to get you full-length movies right at home, right to your television set. Um, what, a, what an amazement that we've come so far. And then right after that, uh, TBS uh, came out, and so that was more cable TV. And then PBS Uh, the public broadcasting system, uh, jumped on the bandwagon of these cable networks and began piping it into uh, homes all across uh, the United States and the world even uh, in the mid to late 70s. I was probably seven, eight, maybe nine years old. So this is, you know, over a decade later for me when we got cable for the very first time. Now, We couldn't afford HBO because that was an upcharge. But getting TBS and WGN and CNN and all the news networks and all those things and and the sporting networks and ESPN for the very first time, piping sports into your household uh, for for decades now, uh, we were able to watch things that were not available to us on our local TV stations like ABC, NBC, CBS, uh, and eventually the Fox uh, network. Um, But it's amazing how we go from those digital cable to to now how we're all streaming and we're all watching online and we can come live via social media or these apps or YouTube, all those things. What an crazy. And when we first got cable when I was a kid, it was one of those things like, hey, man, or when I heard of my friend, I was like, hey, you want to invite me over? Uh, You know, can I come watch? cable TV with you. Uh, It was those type of moments where we invited into a living room type setting, just like you see here. It was these come and see moments that we had. We're like, man, come and see my my brand new TV. Look at my new remote. You know, we've had these come and see moments uh, growing up, and, and cable TV was one of those, whether it was your friend on the block that got it for the very first time, or finally, uh, your dad finally said, all right, we're getting cable TV. And, and that's what it was like for me, uh, you know, in the mid-late 80s. Uh, for me as a kid, you know, getting it for the very first time, man, we, we thought, man, we are moving on up. We've hit the big time. It was our come and see moment. By then, most of my friends probably already had cable TV. We were kind of the last ones on the block. But to, tonight, uh, for our Journey Wednesday night, we're going to dive into a, a scripture where we see Jesus create a a personal invitation. And so let's dive into John chapter 1, verses 35 through 40 tonight. And we see that John the Baptist, it says, the following day John, this is John the Baptist, was, was standing with two of his disciples. And as Jesus walked by, John said, look at him, the Lamb of God. He's declared Look, there is the Lamb of God. And when John's two disciples heard this, they followed Jesus. Jesus looked around and saw them following. He says, what do you want? They said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? 
Verse 39, come and see, he said. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon when they went with him to the place where he was staying. And they remained with him the rest of the day. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of these men who had heard about John and said, and what John had said, and then followed Jesus. We have this incredible moment right here that in, in verse 36 and in verse 35 and 36, we see that John the Baptist is standing out there by the Jordan River. He's talking with, and he's just probably having a conversation with two of his disciples and he looks and he says behold the lamb of God and you see John the Baptist and, and we see this what we talked weeks ago about John the Baptist is that John was was all about preparing the way John was all about pointing people to Jesus John recognized his calling he recognized his purpose and that was to point others to Jesus he, he declared it he says that I'm not the one no, I'm only preparing the way. I'm only here to point back to Jesus. I mean, I, I'm, I'm wanting to point people to the Christ. That I'm only here for a little while. I, I know my role and I've accepted it. Like, I, I'm not even worthy enough to untie his sandals, John the Baptist would say. And so he is standing with two of his students, two of his followers, and he says, hey, look. There's the one you should be following. There's the Lamb of God. And upon hearing this, the two men who are standing with John the Baptist, they heard what John was saying. They heard what he was saying about Jesus. And as soon as they heard what their teacher was saying about another teacher, one that John was talking about, one that he was preparing the way, they followed him. In verse 38, we see that Jesus turns around and he sees them following. And he asks this question, what do you want? I think we could peel this question back and we could even ask that question right now in 2020. If Jesus was here and, and he sees that we begin to follow him, no matter what stage in life you are, no matter what your age is right now, whether... You're a middle schooler, high schooler, small group leader, church attender, have a job, you're essential, non-essential, whatever it may be. What do you want? And I think all of us have close to similar answers right now. We, we want to get out of our living rooms. <laughs> we want to meet back together. We want to get back to Journey Wednesday nights and, and we're ready to just congregate. We're ready to meet with more than just our family in our living room watching Disney Plus or Netflix or Hulu, whatever it may be for you. We're ready to eat pizza together. We're ready to really break some. We want some za. We want to break za together. <laughs> what do you want? Maybe that's a deeper question because you, you want to make sure that you can continue to pay your bills right now. You want to continue to provide for your family, or you want to graduate, you want to finish school, you want to be back on your sports team, or maybe for you it's, it's a burden for someone you love or someone close to you because you, you want a miracle in their life, you need, they need healing, they need a touch and, and something that can only come from God right now. What do you want is the question that Jesus is ans asking us still today. And their answer that comes right after that, when he asked them, what do you want? They, they say, we want to know where you're staying. Because when you ask a question, we're intrigued in our heart to respond to Jesus the way these two. And it was an honest answer. We want to know blank. And for us in 2020, dealing with COVID-19, dealing with this coronavirus, dealing with quarantine, be, dealing with staying at home, staying away from everyone, not being able to meet as a congregation, not being able to meet together. We want to know when we will get back to church. We want to know when, when is, the, is the new normal going to start. We want to know, these two guys just want to know, Jesus, where are you staying? 
They, they wanted to know more about him, and they wanted to start off by diving in. Where are you staying? And Jesus would ask them, the intrigue for them to know, and Jesus is waiting for them to respond. But, but in our asking, where are you staying, it means that we want to go further with Jesus than the initial conversation. And if we're going to follow after Jesus, it, it has to be more than, than, than just to fulfill our own needs and our own wants, right? To follow Jesus, that we, we need to be following for the right reason. Because if we're following Jesus, if we're longing to follow after him, if we're longing to know more about him and to get to know him and have an intimate relationship with him, then we need to check our heart and we need to check our intentions. And we're not just following Jesus so that it, that it aligns to our cause, that it aligns to our purpose and not his. See, we've got to examine our hearts and our motives for following him. Are we seeking? Are we seeking him for his glory or our own? Well, in Jesus' response, he says, you want to know where I'm staying? Come and see. And it's this personal invitation to come and see. This is where Jesus says, come and see. I want to show you where I'm staying. I want you to come and see my personal space. This is an intimate invitation. And I'm going to be honest with you tonight, as I sit in the living room, I'm reminded of when I was in high school, we had a very small, intimate living room myself growing up. And my junior and senior year, um, it was not a place that I would have invited people to come over. Jesus openly invites. You have these two strangers that say, hey, Jesus, where are you staying? And he just says, come and see, come and see. I, I was always hesitant, and I was very particular about who I would ever invite over to my house. And, and maybe you might say there was, there was some pride issues there. There was some shame um, a little bit, to be honest. I was a little ashamed of where I lived. Um, my last couple years in high school, I lived in a trailer park. We lived in a single wide trailer. Uh, it was not glamorous whatsoever. Our yard looked horrendous. We barely did yard work. Um, my parents worked all the time. And uh, it was where God had me for that season of life. And I, and I know I, I can look back now and I know what, that God was with me and, and God brought me through that th- area and that time of life. And, and there's a little bit of humbling that comes out of that for me, I realize. But Man, I did not want to invite anybody over. Uh, there was very few people, really close friends. Um, but this was not a, 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 that was not a place. It was not a place that I wanted to invite people over. Jesus was the opposite. He, when somebody was intrigued, when somebody was willing to follow him, he said, come on. Come and see. And he invited others to come over and when he invited them over and they decided to follow him to go and see what he was inviting them to come and see and they remained the 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 scripture shows us that it was later in the afternoon and they remained with him the rest of the day and the rest of the time see when when jesus extends an invitation when he says come and see and we begin to spend time with him and you spend time with Jesus you want to stay with Jesus and there's a there's a a great reason and I want to dive into a, a few more scriptures the reason why as Jesus continues to extend this invitation he continues to extend this personal invite as we look in Matthew chapter 11 verses 28 through 30 we find again Jesus is giving a personal invitation. Then Jesus said, Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28, then Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. I, I think we're all in this space right now where we feel weary 
and we feel like we have some heavy burdens. Verse 29, he says, take up my yoke upon you and let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear and the burden I give you is light. Hmm. Jesus says, come to me. Before he was saying, come and see, but now he's saying, come to me. It, again, it's a, it's a deeper personal invitation. Why? Because this is the greatest, some of the greatest attributes that we can learn about our Savior is that he is humble and he is gentle. He is humble and gentle at heart. And in him, in Jesus, in Christ alone, we find this rest, this deep rest. I don't know about you guys, if you've ever just been, uh, you know, maybe you've worked out really hard, or maybe you've done yard work for a long period of time, um, or maybe you've just been in on a project, and, you know, maybe it's drained you mentally and physically, and you ever just, just come and you plop down on the couch and, and you're just resting and, and maybe you got a cold drink of water or Gatorade or back in the day when I was a kid, right, a big glass of Kool-Aid, uh, just sitting in your living room, just drinking and, and, you're, and you're at rest because you ha- you're, a, you're a good tired. You spend a lot of energy and you feel like you've accomplished a lot. Jesus says, come to me. Just like you would go and you find that comfy spot or that comfy chair or the comfy spot on the couch that you like to claim every single time, Jesus says, come to me. Come into, because I will give you rest. Why? Because I'm humble and gentle at heart. You will find rest for your soul. He says, let me teach you. See, so many of us, we... We don't know how to obtain this because we're searching for it in all these other areas. We're creating new hobbies and, and new trends in our lives and new things. But, but ultimately, what the, the person and the place we need to be going right now more than ever, not to, to Google, not to YouTube, not another presidential press conference online. No, we, we got to be diving into God's word. Because he says, come to me and I will give you rest. And rest is something that we all need right now. In the midst of everything that's going on, in the midst of of the chaos, in the midst of waiting in another line to get into another store, in the midst of, of waiting, we need rest. We need to rest our bodies. We need to rest our minds, but more importantly, we need to rest our heart and let God heal us. Jesus would continue with another invitation in Matthew chapter 16, verses 24 through 25. He would be talking to his disciples and Jesus in verse 24, Matthew 16, 24, he says, and then Jesus said to his disciples, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way Take up your cross and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. You will save it. Jesus now invites us to follow him in a completely different way. Before it was follow me. Hey, what do you want? Where are you staying? Come and see. Jesus was a personal invitation. He would talk to his disciples and he would talk to people who began to follow him. And he would say, hey, I know that you have worries and doubts and burdens. Come to me. Let me give you rest. And now Jesus would invite us and said, hey, if you really want to follow me, you really want to come after me, then you have to deny your own way. He invites us to follow him in a completely different way. In order to follow him, that we must give up our own way of doing things. That we must take up our cross. What, what does that even mean? That means, to, that means that daily you have got to die to yourself. It's a daily denying yourself. 
That means that it's no longer about our way, but it's about seeking and serving God's will on a daily basis. See, come and see is a, is a personal invitation to follow after Jesus. But in order for us to follow after Jesus, then we've got to, to deny ourselves and follow after him. I want to close tonight by looking at one last passage of scripture, and that's going to be in Luke chapter 9, verses 23 through 25. And Jesus says it this way in Luke 9, 23, he starts off and he says, and then he said to the crowd, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way and take up your cross daily and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. And this is where Luke extends what we read earlier in verse 25. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but are yourself lost or destroyed? I want us to to reflect on that that last line there and what Luke is saying and and what what Luke recorded and what Jesus was saying. He says, what do you benefit if you gain the whole world? What if you get everything back in the next couple of weeks? What if we are able to meet back together soon? What if, what kind of things in our lives, what daily opportunities have you taken advantage of to lean in, to press in, to be a fervent follower of Jesus Christ, to pick up your cross daily and to follow after him? What if we gain all these things back? What if we gain the whole world back, but now we... We have been lost and we are destroyed. Come and see all that Christ has to offer. But when we come and see, we'll want to stay. And Jesus is going to say, if you, you've come and, and you see what I have to offer, you see that if you come in, I can give you rest. You come and see that, you, you can, that my burden is light. My yoke is easy for you. But if you want to be my follower... You want to follow after me. Deny your own way. Pick up your cross and follow me. That's the come and see that I want to invite you. Come and see who Jesus is. Come and read in his word and in his scriptures. Because Jesus is offering you a come and see personal invitation to change your life and my life and everybody, that the, the opportunity you have So when everything comes back to normal, when we gain all these things back and access to restaurants and haircuts and meeting back, meeting back together on Wednesday nights and Sunday mornings, what's going to be different? My prayer and my hope is that it's your walk, it's your daily walk, it's your daily carrying of your cross and denying of yourself. Come and see. Come and see. Let me pray for you. Father God, thank you so much for tonight and your word and this message. Jesus, you are inviting us. You're extending a personal invitation in our lives to come and see. And Lord, I pray that as followers, as believers, as unbelievers, Lord, as if we come and see Lord, that we won't want to leave and we'll want to continue to tell other people. Lord, that first come and see moment that we saw there in John chapter 1, Andrew met you. He then began going and telling everybody about you. Thank you for Andrew. He began to spread the word. Lord, I pray that you would convict all of our hearts that as we come and see, as we read in your word, that we then would also invite other people that we would share this gospel we would share this good news because Jesus you are the only one that could give us salvation and restoration and rest for our souls it's in your mighty name we pray amen hope to see you guys all tonight on the zoom call at 7 30
Love you guys.